Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I wanted to show you this tweet. This is a good tweet from um, this guy, Charlie Bolelo. Um, he says, under new central bank leadership, Turkey cut rates by four, 425 BPS to 19.75%. Its first rate cut in four and a half years. President Erdogan had fired the prior governor three weeks ago for failing to loosen monetary policy as instructed by him global central bank rates now i just wanted you to show you i just wanted to show you this look at all the the countries that have cut their rates and here's the dates that they cut them here's uh this is the central bank rate today uh, real central bank rate is right here just take us for, as a for example the real central bank rate is at 0.8 percent um, they hiked in december and then all the politicians and trump got all mad because the stock market started going haywire. And the reason it started going haywire is the obvious reason that all these countries have put themselves in a debt box. Um, if you want to think of it this way, think of, imagine that you had $15,000 in, in credit card debt and your credit card company that decides to raise your interest rates by one or 2%. That would begin to hurt after a while. Well, all of these countries, remember, Interest rates have not been been sustained at this kind of low levels in the his in the history of the world. They have not done this. This is insanity, and they all know it's insanity. And they now they're in a place where they cannot raise the interest rates without the markets of the world going haywire. But imagine, just take that that credit card example. You've got fifteen thousand dollars in credit card. That would really hurt, wouldn't it? If just one or two percent raise on on your credit card on the interest rate that they're charging you on your credit card. Well, now imagine that you're the United States of America and you have a US, dot, US debt clock website that is just for the purpose of illustrating the absurdity of your debt. And imagine you're in $22.5 trillion of debt. And then imagine that none of the politicians have the balls or guts, whatever you think is more um, decent for me to say, none of them have the guts to raise their hand and say, our country is going to go down the tubes if you guys don't man up, grow up, and, t and talk to your constituents and tell them it's time to grow up, that we can't afford all of these government programs that, all, that pull all the heartstrings that everybody thinks they have to have. We can't afford it anymore. We couldn't afford it when we promised it to you, but none of them have the guts to do that. And, and for that reason, all they're going to do is they're just going to take us over the cliff. And when we go over the cliff, just make sure that you're holding some digital assets because it's not going to, it's going to be an extremely bumpy ride when we go over that cliff. Okay. Next, I wanted to show you this from X-Men XRP, at XRP 33. Brad Garlinghouse was interviewed, it said, in London by Fortune Magazine. I'm going to get off this website really quick here because it's loaded down with ads. And my good buddy, XRP Crypto Wolf, summarized the gist of what Brad Garlinghouse said in this interview so that I don't have to sit there and have that ad-heavy website pulled up. XRP Crypto Wolf said this, Ripple's Brad Garlinghouse is concerned about regulations for the cryptocurrency industry that could result from Facebook's Libra stablecoin. It's important to me that when re regulators start asking questions that they don't lump us into one bucket, one big bucket. Um, and then he goes on. Worries about money laundering shouldn't apply to XRP. Transfers over Ripple's network can only be made by regulated financial institutions which already have to comply with AML KYC rules, irrespective of the method they use to make cross-border payments. And he said this several times. Bank A can send, if they send XRP, it has to go for start at Bank A, which is a regulated bank, and then it goes, it transfers to Bank B, and that's a regulated bank. So it has to go through all those rules on both ends. And so it already is regulated. 
And that's the point he's making there. He doesn't want to be lumped in with these digital assets like Libra. Okay. And it's a really smart, and I don't think he will ultimately. I think, I think it's cool. Now, this is interesting stuff right here. This is a, it just seems like just such a simple tweet, but Rhythm Trader's a thousand percent right. Let me see if I can't even remember if I follow Rhythm Trader because I need to. If I don't, yes, I do. Rhythm Trader says cryptocurrencies haven't had their dot com bubble yet. This is something I've said from the beginning of this channel. I'm going to prove it to you right now. We are not in a bubble. All that bubble talk was just the media, probably paid for media, trying to scare everyone so that all of their friends could get into this. I'm going to prove to you that we're not in a bubble. I'll show you. And what I, the example I've used a thousand times on here is that if you look at the dot-com bubble, which peaked in around 1999-2000, it reached 9 to 13 trillion, and that was in that year. The equivalent of 9 to 13 trillion in today's dollars would be more like, who knows, 20 to 30 trillion dollars, okay? That's just to reach a hype, a, a bubble hype status, okay? Well, let me, let me show you what has occurred, okay? This, first, this, what you're looking at, this is a chart of what happened in the dot-com run-up. Now, it's important that you understand around 95, 96, um, I graduated Auburn in 1996, somewhere right in here, they were telling us that they, that we, we could get one of these new things called an email address. And me and my friends were like, what do we need one of those for? That was That's where we were. We were just being introduced in about 95, 96 to cell phones. The, the most popular cell phone at the time was a handheld Nokia cell phone. You could send simple text messages on it and you could receive phone calls. That was around 96, I think, maybe 96 into 97. Everybody had one of those Nokia phones. That was the phone at the time. That was pre-BlackBerry, pre, of course, iPhone and all of that. Around this same time, right somewhere in here, everybody started logging on to the internet through a dial-up connection using AOL. And the only browsers were Netscape, and I believe Internet Explorer came along after that, somewhere right in here. So look, look at these blips. They look like little blips. But I can assure you, these were those a lot of people that were in the game making a lot of money right here in the early days, early days. And a lot of those people probably thought that that was a bubble at the time. Okay, so let's look at this historically. If you look at Bitcoin, this this would be the 2017 run up. Okay, this is the run up we've had recently. What a lot of people don't know and don't don't remember, I can tell you about it because I was there. Look back here. This is November. This is the November of 2013 run up. Bitcoin was down down here at $190 and went up. It got on up to over $1,000 right there around late November of 2013. The reason I remember this is because during this time, I can remember a specific morning. It was Thanksgiving morning. I'm almost positive it was Thanksgiving morning because I was smoking a turkey and I had one of, I was in my backyard early in the morning smoking a turkey and I had the turkey on and I'm on the phone with one of the only friends I had at the time who owned any of these digital assets and we couldn't believe what was happening at the time. It was the same level of excitement, if not more, than we saw in 2017. And now look at it right now. It looks like a tiny, tiny little blip. It, it, you, you barely notice it. 2017 will be the same type of blip. Now let's look back at that chart. I would say that 2013, that what I experienced in digital assets was somewhere something like this. Okay. And then uh, 2000, we, we might say that 2017 was maybe this or maybe this or maybe it was this. I don't know. I think it's probably more like this. In the scheme of things, when you look back on it, this is going to be a blip and it's probably going to be, I, I believe that we are somewhere between here and here. I believe that we are somewhere in here. The dot com bubble peaked here, folks. We have not. And remember, that was the Internet of Information. This is the Internet of Value, the Internet of Money. This is going to be bigger. And 
9 to 13 trillion dollars then in present value of money anybody who studied that is more like 20 to 30 trillion dollars now and the fact that this is the internet of money and it's the a new asset class an asset class to swallow all other asset classes means that we're talking about something that is far when it really achieves a bubble status with wall street and utility and utility coming in we're, we're talking about something that far exceeds what we've been through. And I wanted to just show you this article to reinforce what I'm talking about. November 29th, 2013. It looks overvalued. The Bitcoin bubble. They were saying the same thing, folks, back then. The same thing they said about 2017 they were saying then. None of these financial media outlets even knew what they were dealing with at the time. And it's the same thing. We, we have never been through a bubble in digital assets. This has just begun. Okay, from Wild Pratt, and this is so true. This is something that's lost a lot of times in conversations about investing in digital assets. We do tell you to invest, don't invest more than you're willing to lose. It is high risk, high reward. But what they're saying here is true. The way to become rich is to put all your eggs in one basket and then watch that basket, Andrew Carnegie. The, these guys back then, the guys that created the steel industry and the, and the railroad industry and, and, and various other, the oil industry, these guys had guts. They had gut. They had what, uh, they were what my friend from New Jersey says, they were balls to the wall. These guys were, were, had guts like nobody else. They risked everything they had. I'm not telling you to risk everything you had that you have, but I am telling you that they put all their eggs in one basket. They bet it all on that basket and they were really betting on themselves. Well, I consider myself, I've seen enough. I'm betting on the people at Ripple. I have a full bet on the people at Ripple more than any other digital asset. But look at what this guy says. Nobody became wealthy quickly due to diversifying their investments. You know why the wealthiest people tend to be entrepreneurs and their heirs. They focused on, they focused and risked all their resources on one specific opportunity. Diversification preserves wealth. Concentration builds it. This is so true. It's something you're not told by financial advisors, but the real people, the people who get mega wealthy, the people in my town whose great grandfathers got mega wealthy, they put everything they had on the line and many of them even went bankrupt more than once before they made their fortune because they kept placing the big bets over and over and because they believed in themselves and what they were betting on at the time and, and they finally hit it. I believe digital assets are our chance to hit it specifically Ripple and XRP. This, this is our time and there's not a part of me that doesn't believe that and these guys are right. Next, from NBK Crypto, at N-B-K-L-Y-R-A-D, um, gives us this. Let me have a drink here. In the, I'm not going to read this article to you, but you do need to go and read it. It's from today. It's from well, July 25th from Forbes, okay? Forbes all of a sudden is on board with digital assets. Is mainstream blockchain around the corner? Momentum builds just under the surface in 2019. Um, and she's exactly right. Everything in this article is talking about how all of this foundation is being laid underneath the surface. And at some point, it's all going to explode. You need to go read this article on your own time. I'm not going to go through the thing. I just wanted to make you aware of it. Okay. The crypto utility guy. Um, at utility guy seven sent me this. This is from Curious Wayne. I know a few people already noticed this. BTR now on coin market cap. This is from Bitrue. Um, these guys have been listed on, on coin market cap. This is really good for those of you who have been accumulating BTR. I have been accumulating a little bit. And I believe that when we have blast off, a lot of the people that are looking for investments will go to coin market cap. This website gets billions of views, folks. So this is, this is a very good thing. So congrats to them. Next, Uphold tweeted this out which is a very good exchange for those of you that don't use it. You can get XRP there and it's a US based site. Exciting update. We have lowered the minimum for funding via ACH bank transfer. Uh, we, verified members can now add funds from a US bank account with a $25 mini minimum. Happy, happy buying. And finally, um, wanted to show you this. 
my buddy John McAfee, he got arrested for the second time. We've confirmed my second arrest in one week, uh, one week, a record, I think. So John McCain, John McCain, I keep saying McCain, John McAfee has been arrested for the second time. <laughs> this guy just trips me out. Okay, and finally, I, I got this from uh, at Matt Sisk 70. I don't know about you folks, but I'm thinking about moving here. Ripple Brook Road. <laughs> thought that was funny. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that John McAfee has been arrested again. Thanks for listening.